Once you get your background all painted with the um, purple, pick up a little bit of Indian turquoise. Just a little dab will do ya. So, and then we'll, we're gonna smushy mishy mashy. I've got a bad reflection going on here. Hopefully you can get the idea. And so we're gonna put some paint out there. Change your angle if you can't see it when you're doing yours. I'm gonna make sure to go over the moon, next to the moon, and then give it some scumbles. Now make it kind of like a ooh, dreamy, scary night sky. Okay, not too much choppy choppy in this. We want it to be a little bit more misty. But we want to make sure that our black um, haunted house is going to show up there. So we know where it's going to go. It's going to go on top of this hill. So picked up a little bit more. I want a paper towel. Make sure I'm not going to make a big giant mess. Wipe off of my paper towel. And let's make sure that we lighten this area specifically. We don't want it to look obviously lightened. You'll only get this dreamy look when your paint is real wet. <clears throat> now I think that'll show up. Okay, and then repeat the other side. You can play in this a little bit later as well. If there's something you don't like, you can make alterations. Base in your windows with honey brown and then use a flat brush and float a little bit of the golden straw that you base the moon in across the top of it and then straighten it out. We can fix anything with black. Only give the windows one coat of the honey brown. And then take your thinned black and make your window lines back in. Okay, now we're ready to shade our moon. I'm going to get a big oval glaze brush, That's and that's what I'm going to float with. I'm going to put a little bit extra water on my palette. I want this to be a nice float, and then I'm going to blend the snot out of it. Okay, blot on my paper towel, pick up a little bit more. We don't want that, that color to creep all the way across. <clears throat> we want it nice and wet, though, because it's big. Big things are harder to float, and so we need to get right next to that edge completely next to the edge. By using a bigger brush, then we're able to play a little bit more because it pre-wets a bigger area. Okay, so I'm going to go back and walk towards the middle. I'm not going to worry about getting too far into the middle because I have a secret weapon. But we do want that edge nice and um, shaded. Okay, so I have floats on both sides. And I left this a little bit messy so I can show you the cheat. The cheat is these um, really big crescent stencil brushes again, the same thing that we used for our background. I'm going to use it completely dry. I'm going to pick up our paint, and on a completely dry paper towel, we're going to rub off all the color that we can. And since this is a dark color going on top of a light color, we want to be really careful not to start off with anything too scary. <laughs> well, we're on the right project for that. Okay, so then right next to the edge, sometimes you need to stipple to kind of get the color going where you want it. And you'll just walk that color in just a little bit. Reload as needed. Sometimes it takes a little bit to get your brush where you need it to be. I'm gonna leave a little bit less of this at the top. And then we'll go back and make it darker and stronger next to the edge of that float. Okay, 
Okay. Bacon. That's good. Now that we have some of our base coating done, we need to give our do our details. This is the fun part. The painting. Sometimes I get a little bit depressed when I when I get to this part where I've got the the, the base coating done and um, you know, and I take a look at it and I know that you know everything's in the right color and stuff. I get a little depressed that it doesn't look pretty yet, and um, I get real agitated even. So I just wanted to share that because it's if you feel this way. You're not alone. This is the, the ugly duckling stage, and then pretty soon we're going to get all these little top details on, and the magic and the sparkle will start happening. So um, we're going to put some magic and sparkle with a nice um, number 12 um, shader, and we're going to just shade in, make these pumpkins start popping. And I don't know if you've caught on to this yet, but when you do a big floor cloth like this, it's a really good idea to start from the the top and work your way down to the foreground. That way you're not always reaching over and wiping off something that you've just done. And these, um, this first color that we're using, um, for the burnt sienna, we need to make this a pretty big float because we're going to deepen it. So you want to walk it out just a little. And in order to leave a little more color on my piece, I'm loading my brush thicker, but I'm also laying it down and just kind of patting on the float. Okay. We want to shade down in front, like they're sunk in. And when you get to these corners, don't end by going straight off the edge. You want to end by walking it up the edge. And each of these pumpkins will also get shaded on their edges. You can almost just shade them everywhere. They're going to get shaded to separate as well, um, separate the sections. So each of the sections will get shaded. Okay, and so when I don't do something right, or I do a little bit of my blending right here on the piece. It's kind of fun when I look up into the camera um, to see if I'm on camera or whatever. I can see my progress in reverse and upside down. It's kind of an interesting way to paint. When you get ready to do the sections, you're going to do back-to-back -back floats. So you're going to float on this side, float on this side, and they're going to meet together in the middle. This needs to be a strong, um, strong narrow float because you don't want it to take over the whole entire pumpkin. Okay, so you just set your brush down, float that way, and then I'm going to do all the same sides, and then I'm going to go back and do the opposite sides, and keep this float, like I said, real narrow. That doesn't mean you switch brushes, that just means you load less paint on your brush. Okay, I guess I'm going to do this some. Oops. You don't want any square edges on these. They're round pumpkins, so be careful about jangling a little left turn there. Okay, now we're using some black plum, and we are tucking in shadows on the back where the um, pumpkins are really stacked up behind. I'm going to give the appearance of everything being in front of them behind. This is all done. All of this depth is done with the illusion of um, values, just light and dark. If it's darker, then it appears in the shadow, and if it's lighter, it appears in the, in the sunlight, and that gives the illusion of depth and 3D dimension. It's kind of really fascinating. We'll use some burnt umber to shade our wagon. I'm going to shade next to the rails, I'm going to shade under the rails separate them. You can make them jiggity-joggity. You know, do it on purpose. This is going to be a falling apart wagon here. And we've seen these things in train yards, right? They are a mess. Oops, keep out of your gray. And then you'll go ahead and do the sides, and you'll do flip over, and you'll do all of the tops as well. Okay, give your pumpkins with the orange twist. Just do a little dry brush in the high areas.
when I start to make my faces on the um, pumpkins, I always outline first, even though this shouldn't make a difference. It keeps me in the lines better if I outline it first. Maybe I'm paying closer attention or something. So go through, outline everything. I'm using that Mighty Fine Liner, which is just short enough and just long enough to get the job done. Line all their faces. And then fill in with black. Okay, we're going to go through with our Hauser Medium Green. And we're going to put stems on these little guys. Line in your stems with Hauser Light Green. do some highlighting here in just a second. Now see in the areas like just there where I went in front of the moon, um, it, my Hauser light green is not going to show so we're going to switch in that area to a Hauser dark. And we're going to tuck in a little bit of shading on the back end of our leaves and into the middle a little bit. We're going to highlight the tips of the leaves with olive green. So we'll load our brush real dry and then just wipe up from the tip back. Just give it a little tickly poo. Okay, if we want to go nuts, we can tuck in just a little thin float. A black plum. You know, all these projects that you do, you can stop at any point with the amount of details. You can go nuts with details or you can stop. So, you know, when I say something like that, that means you could do it or don't do it and you're probably going to be just as happy. Okay, so we want to go right under the leaves with a little black plum. Make them stand out. I'm using my fingers as a mop. We want to add some of our wagon detail. I've mixed my burnt umber with my black. Put my glasses on. And we want to make some of this um, one line here. We want to make some knot holes. This thing is a mess. Let's make a giant crack over here. So you just fill it in. Cracks are never straight, so you want to make sure that you don't keep things all pretty and nice. Okay, and we'll just go like that, and then, oh, this needs to be chipped out up here. And go ahead and line all the cracks with thinned. Line the top. You can also give yourself real thinned paint, and you can give yourself some wood grain. Once again, this would be one of those if you didn't want to do this, let's make a little knot there in the middle. It's kind of fun just to dink and diddle a little bit. Dink and diddle is the official industry term for messing around with paint. Now the rule for um, detail work is the more in the center of interest it is, the more detail it gets and that demands or commands more interest. So one of the excuses I can use for this is that, um, is that I am in the center of interest and I want to keep it there so I'm putting a lot of detail. The eye goes where there's the most detail. I'm going to mix honey brown with golden straw. I'm going to give it a little highlight action going on there. Just with a rubby rub rub. Using the chisel of the brush. I 
with black, I'm going to shade down the edge of the metal bands and then I'm going to shade right on the wood next to the black. And this is creating that deeply darkly shadow. You're going to float under where those rivets are going to go. Each one of these gets a rivet and then we'll highlight Pardon me. Real controlled float. With driftwood, you make the little rivets. Wagon wheels. I'm gonna mix the black with the burnt umber. Put our glasses on so we can see small. Yep, you know, I think we're going to go with just straight black. I don't think that's going to show so well. What I'm going to do is we're going to line next to each of these, all on the same side. And we're going to highlight just right on top of these spokes. Okay, all highlight. And we're going to do the same on our hub. Although I guess we could make that a metal hub, but I think I'm just going to make it a, an old wooden hub. All right, now we have wagon wheels. I'm thinking we're going one more brighter. Let's mix some golden straw. a little bit brighter. Whoopsie. Try to keep that round. I painted the round out. Okay, yeah, those show up a little bit better. To get the shade our shingles, you're going to do the same thing to the shingles on this as the engine car. So you shade under, under some glasses. Just follow the relief. And we're going to repeat this shadow with black, so draw it right up in there. Kind of fill it in almost in these real wide areas. Because this is aged, yucky, old shingles, you don't have to be super meticulous when you're floating these. A little bit of wiggle wiggle and some texture like that is just perfect. So, try to keep it off your ghost. Your ghost wants to be a white ghost or semi-white anyway. We're going to dry brush from the tips of the shingles up. And I've got the golden straw with the milk chocolate in my brush, but I think I'm going to change it to the golden straw, I mean to the milk chocolate plus um, some of the gray driftwood color. I don't want those shingles to be too ha cha cha -y looking and I think Having yellow in them is going to ha cha cha. Them. So that's nice and deader looking. Deader? Hmm. Anyway, just give them a highlight. Pull on either side down the edges. Nice big gnarly float there underneath our ghost who cannot cast a shadow, but we're not going to tell him that under our crow. And then go ahead and load in some black. And then that's when you want to go in and grab those deeply darkly areas of your shingled roof. And use your thin liner. And you'll add, just go ahead and add some black depthy detail kind of cracks and underneath things. And we'll crack some of them up. This 
squint your eyes from time to time because this is much easier to do if you're squinting. All right, so we'll start the ghosts out. We're going to take our warm white and our dry brush and totally wipe off all the excess. Keep it off of your project. This is the part I don't like about painting floor cloths is my palette's all over my project and if I'm not careful then I make a giant mess all over everything and I have to erase. Okay, so we're just going to dry rub in the middle of his head and up the center of his um, whatever that floaty thing is up there. We want to skip where his chin or his neck would be and then get his belly and I'm going to give him a raised look up the middle of his little arms. Try to stay in the lines. That works out a little bit better. Added a couple of these little, um, just they're just lined with warm white, little like snowflake kind of things, but they're my little magic dust. And then we're going to use our little tiny um, domed stencil brush after they're dry. Rub it off, and we're going to add just a little bit of background fluff for them. Gives a little bit more luminescence, kind of. Glowing. There we go, that's looking real pretty. Okay, next we're going to float on our ghosty poo. Not everywhere, so we won't go around. Oops. This hand is going to come up, and so we'll float where it bends up. He's like sprinkling the magic of Halloween. Okay, and then give him that, so he's like, ooh. Use neutral gray to shade where his hands cup over. We're going to use Napa Red and our scrubby brush and put some little cheeks on our ghosts. I don't know that ghosts actually have cheeks, but that's okay. Now that I have this color on my scrubby brush, I think we'll share a little of the red love there in our pumpkin shadow areas. Oh, yeah, I like that. Oh, yeah, that looks nice. Just really adds a little zing in there, doesn't it? Well, silly me, I'm not done with this color yet. I'm going to do the same thing in the corners of this middle box car. a little bit of that color in there. Just a touch, just enough to share it. We're going to shade the shingles, or the sh like shingles? Shingles, I guess, with midnight blue. And we probably want to go ahead and let's make them be a little irk, 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 irk. Not straight shingles. These are old clapboard boards. Turquoise blue. Give this building a little bit of highlight. And I think to keep it in the yucky, scratchy, nasty look, I think we're going to go ahead and just um, dry brush this. So load the brush with just a scant, just push some paint in it. The dry brushing that we do when we're highlighting um, layers and stuff like that where we leave the background showing is a little bit different. This is dry brushing just to make it look like it's scratchy paint. Closer for ya. And I'm flicking up towards I always flick on the paper towel. You don't want any sudden stuff coming off your brush. Okay, now I'm going to dirty this building up just a little bit. So I'm going to highlight with a dirty brush um, with turquoise blue plus neutral gray. Make sure, driftwood gray, sorry. And just highlight one more time, but just this kind of mucky color is going to 
dirty it up and not keep it quite so bright. We want to tone it down just a little bit. Okay, our door has raised panels in it, and I'm going to use the driftwood gray mixed with a little bit of maybe 50-50 with black plum. And that was too bright, so just want to give the impression of these raised panel doors. Let's see, how are those? I drew it out. Oops, I already screwed it up. Okay, so we'll just make up a new kind of a panel door. And we got to give it a doorknob. So let's mix a little black with a little bit of the black plum. And call that the doorknob. We use the thin neutral gray to make our little sign hanger. Use the black give ourselves a nail. Okay, and then maybe let's do a little bit of thinned black. And let's give this a little skip lining where it's going to be shadowed. Okay, next to the door. We could also make some door cracks. Let's crack this door. It's an old creaky door. If I was really detail oriented, I would put a little mouse in this hole right here. However, I'm not. Okay, got some cracks. I don't think that's enough cracks though. Let's see. There we go. That's better. The blue with the black. And do a kind of a black and blue. Okay, I'm going to do some shading up there. We'll run our cracks that way. Just have fun with this. I wouldn't use the pattern if I were you. I would kind of figure out what you can do to make your own fun little things. I basted my little sign with neutral gray and now I'm using the driftwood with water and my mighty fine liner to do the lettering. I don't want this to become you know, the feature of the thing, so I'm keeping it subtle. Let's see if I can spell correctly. So maybe make it a washier float. Shade on either side. We could shade this sign just a little bit. We probably need to give that a little bit of a chip out at the top as well. This is, you know, a cracked pipe. There we go. And on the edges of our cracked pipe, there would probably be a little bit of a reflection where the light caught. So I'll give it our little reflection. Okay. Switch to your dry brush, which is not a dry brush. It's going to be pinched out with water, though. And use your um, driftwood gray, same color as the highlight there, as the edge highlight. And give it just that little bit of highlight down the middle. And maybe a little bit brighter. And I did my roof at the same time as the caboose, did my ghost at the same time, and then the rest is just base coated. So we're going to um, finish messing with this guy up here. It's, um, it's based in burnt umber, and so we're going to use black to shade. Okay, 
okay, so I want to shade underneath the roof. I've kind of already got it cast down with the, the roof detail. And I think let's go ahead and shade on this um, engine body with the black as well. There's a back to make some cracks. And maybe we'll chip out a section. The nice thing about it is if you hate it, you can put it back. And make that be a plank of some sort. Building of the of the engine, sorry, with black. Just gonna give it a little bit of a definition here. I'm not quite certain what my construction is on this building, but I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Okay, get both sides. Make sure I'm not into anything wet. Once again, that's why we start from the top and work our way down, is so we don't run our hand through things that we're working on. Okay, underneath the frame of the window. I'm going to make it even with that ghost's arm and soften that corner. And you could frame, you could give that frame just a little bit of a shadow right there. Maybe blend where you blended with your burnt umber and it won't be quite so bad. Okay, on the bottom as well. Let's um, side load with black and then let's just make this wheel look like it's got a little bit of a something going on. Give the center a little bit of a shadow. Okay, these are different wheels than these are over here of the... Okay, we want to shade, let's see, really skinny float and we want to shade underneath the sign. So shade with black. Skinny, skinny float. Push where it's all billowed out. Okay, just maybe on one side. And then give yourself some planks. And remember to make them a little bit uneven. I kind of went straight across right there. Okay. Okay, we've got our barrel thing going in the front there, the steam engine part. We're going to use our liner brush, give us our little cracks a little bit. So if you floated, right, then it made a fat kind of a line. We need to thin our paint just a little bit. We made a kind of a fat line, so now you go back through and line right in between that, and it kind of self-shades both sides of that line. Alright, and we want to give this you know, cracks and chips, although how will it steam if it, it does that? I don't know, but that's not my problem. Not my problem today. We want this to be a beat up old nasty thing. Let me put some of these cracks in this um, car as well. A hole, air conditioning, ventilation. And line at the top. Keep your hands out of whatever else you've done. Just where this is really cracked and chipped out. Okay. Gotta crack our little pot up here. Okay, 
Okay, the front is going to be, this guy right here gets lined with black. And let's give this a little line too underneath the pot. Um, let's give her a wheel, a little black hub. We're going to spider web this wheel. Okay, go ahead and line that a little bit more. One next to that. I've got to give this car another crack here. Let's get a little bit of a something going on underneath the window. Oh, this thing's getting messier and messier. Don't you love it? This is great. This is way too much fun. Okay, we want to put our cobwebs in. We're going to use the driftwood for our cobwebs. We want to thin our paint. Let's see how our driftwood's going to show up on top of this. So line your lines. And then scallop to those lines. Pretty cool stuff. Okay. Okay, I think instead of this being a hub in the middle of this, I think let's make it a big spider. Let's make ourselves a little spider. So a body and a head, some legs, so four out either side. Keep my hand out of anything I've been working on. Well, I can honestly say this is a first for me. I don't think I've ever painted a spider before. And if that's not showing up too good, we can um, float it to make it show up just a little bit better. A little bit of burnt umber on our sign. Give it a kind of an aged, worn out kind of a look. Leave the center alone. Just going to rub it with your finger. Halloween Express. And so let's line that with black. Doing a little bit of a curly kind of a movement with my hand. Okay, as I suspected, my spider has dried down and I can't see him at all. So I'm going to use the um, neutral gray. Just going to give it a little bit of a float. And then use my liner brush with the neutral gray. And give that just a little bit of an accent so that it's defined against the background. I want the spider web to be a little bit glistening. So I want to take the white, thin it with my paint, and then let's do a little bit of this liner skip stuff with the white. Yeah, I like that. That looks good. Okay, I based in my skull and crossbones with um, with what driftwood, and then put black eyes and stuff in them. I'm going to tone them down in just a second. I want to go ahead and put the rails on my train tracks, and what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to use washi burnt umber, so not very washy, not like thinned like you want to um, line with it but just washy burnt amber. I want to just give myself, then now the train tracks are going to go further across than the things holding them up. So we want to have some of those coming out. 
They need to be straight, unlike what I just did. Go right through this and then wipe it off. To get train um, rail things, I'm going to mix um, black with cool with um, neutral gray. And I want to just make the um, tracks that the train is going to be sitting on. I'm going to run over. I'm going to run right out the little scene here. Rest my hills. I've got a lot of pumpkins and fence lines and things like this to do down here. But before I do that, I want to make sure that I have my background established because I don't want to scumble over my um, my pumpkins. So I want to start now that I know kind of where my center of interest is going to be and I know that I'm going to want to keep the edges kind of dark. So I know that I'll go into medium foliage, uh, medium hauser green, sorry, and we'll do the dry rub technique. So put some paint on the dry crescent stencil brush, rub off. I'm using a medium brush just to keep some control going. And I'm going to start in my foreground And I just want to make some hills and little things for these to, pumpkins to sit on. We want to break up the ground. It's just a big body of green right now. I just want to do this. And we're going to get a little bit messy on our pumpkin. We want to give it a hill, so we'll draw it out the other side. And it's dark out, so we can't have too much bright stuff going on. Now we'll just give ourselves some interest in... Foreground. We're going to give ourselves some grasses and things like that. See right here where we're going through with these um, fences. That's why I didn't want to do this after I did all my details on my fence. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. That's given some, some interest and stuff. Now we want to go back up here, do more of a highlight at the top of that hill. We got our brush. This is kind of boring for you guys unless you're doing it along with. We want to highlight the edge, the moon side edge of this upper hill. And then rub it across. Okay, up down. <laughs> it's looking pretty good. This is so much fun. This is the fun part, don't you think? Let's give this a little hillock right back here. Something to break things up a little bit. And we'll tickle, fade that out. I don't want too much. Now, in this area, now the, the other area I'll go to in a minute because I have to move the camera and everything. Now I'm going to move into the, oh, it's not the medium, it's the light. Um, Hauser Green. Dirty brush, pick it up. And I'm going to, just up at the brightest part of these highlights, oops, I rubbed off too much. That happens. Or maybe my brush was still too dirty with the other color. Um, if these brushes lose hairs, just wipe them off. They're way too valuable a tool to get too picky about. Okay, so brighter up here. Brighter on this hill line coming off edge. Okay. We're going to go where the tombstones and things are um, in a minute. Okay, now I'm going to go into that um, very brightest green color. I'm going to leave it a little bit harsh on my brush. That's the olive green. Okay, and then that is going to really just be little patches of stuff. steep kind of path going there. I'm going to 
buffering that in just a little bit more. Okay, we're going to leave that right now and see where we get. Because we're okay, we want to add a path to our um, haunted house. And so we want to use thinned black paint. And we want to keep it kind of in where our grassy area is. And then just wipe it a little bit with your finger. Scribble it back and forth. As it gets closer, I think we'll have that go down that hill right there and disappear. There we go. Nice little haunted zigzaggy path. And then after it dries, you can strengthen it if you need to. We don't want it too black base coated because then it'll look like there's a hole in our mountain and we don't want that. I think maybe we'll add a little knife in this guy's hand or a tool or it's probably just a bowling pin, a rolling pin that um, you know somebody's holding and she's going to get her husband when he comes home because he's late. We're going to shade um, it with burnt umber. Paint is getting dried and goopy. Thankfully, this is a haunted sign, and it doesn't matter so much. And by not base coating super picky, and you know, making this more of a washy kind of a sign, um, it gives it that oh, just messed up kind of a look like an old sign would have. And then you guessed it, we got to go into our black, maybe with a touch of the burnt umber. And let's see, we want to give this sign an edge. And then we want to crack the sign, of course. And so we've done that all, the whole project. Okay, so I'll give that, that side there gets a little bit darker. And then over here, draw in some cracks. So, we've got a pumpkin patch. Let's shade our post holding up the sign with black. And black is actually running out. Okay, so I'm going to just give that a little bit. You know, I want there to be like evidence that there's something holding this up. So um, I'm going to go ahead and flick in a highlight too with the um, milk chocolate. Just right down the middle of it. There we go. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now I think while I have this milk chocolate on my brush, I think I'm going to go ahead and highlight these wheels. I didn't think I wanted to, but now I'm thinking I have to. They just sit there and disappear. So I'm going to highlight the front side of these wheels. And it gives them a little bit more of a... that they're there. And then let's highlight on these, the edge of this wheel too, even though he's got the lovely um, spider web. Let's go for the front of these tracks only. Let's pretend like that one's there and give those. Um, just the ones that really show that would get any kind of moonlight glow at all. And that just really lets us know that they're there a little bit better. Okay, so on the fence post, what we're going to do is we're going to take our burnt umber and we are going to shade so that there's a top of the fence. And then we're going to skinny shade each side of each rail. It's got to be skinny shaded. If you fat shade it, and then you're going to know it and it won't look right. Okay, so skinny side. Okay, then you're going to take your liner brush in black. I bet you know where I'm going with this. And we need to create weathered wood. Okay, so this one's got a big old crack out of the top. And like I said, you can make this as detailed as you want. 
You can skip stuff if you want, whatever you want to do. Okay, and then we'll shade those guys behind. And then everything is just a repeat of the same, um, the same technique. Okay, and I think I'm going to shade that behind with um, black, not with burnt umber. Let's see how it looks. Sometimes black acts funny because that's definitely on the front end of this and definitely dark. And it's dark out in our night sky. Yeah, I like that a little bit better. Now, on the rails themselves, what we'll do is we'll do them in burnt umber. So if I was doing this in a production line, I would go through with my burnt umber and shade all the skinny sides of all the rails, do the tops of all my posts, and then I would go into my black, shade everything, and then with the, the black liner brush, I would then put all the details in. Keep your best details in this really front area right here. Don't, don't do real detail, fine stuff way out on the outside because um, it'll be too distracting and too busy. One last thing on this rail before I get going on my little production line. Um, this was based with the driftwood, and so I'm going to take my white and my dry brush, flick it on my paper towel, and just right up that middle and really only on the center ones, I'm going to give it that little bit of, you know, bend. And you'll do that down the middle of the, all the styles. Not on the edge ones, just in this middle area in the center of, center of um, interest. Let's work on our haunted tree now. What I'm going to do, it's based, it's washed, not based, in um, burnt umber. I'm going to take my black. And with a really nice washy float in the most prominent areas, I'm going to give it some really just jiggity jaggedy floats. And I want them all connected. Tree branch here is all broken, so we're going to give him a broken, dark area. Okay. Oh, what we've got to also do is we've got to shade it for depth. So let's just shade down the side of it. Walk that in just a little bit. Stay out of your pumpkins. Okay, each of these branches up here that you can't see, do all of the branches as well. Don't forget the front little stump things. They get some little floats like they have some stuff going on too. Okay, now, okay we're going to pick up, to finish our tombstones, we're going to pick up ah, driftwood. And we're going to dry rub the center of the stones. Maybe a little bit of white mixed in with a dirty brush. If you go straight over, it'll be straight white. It'll look oof, scary. We don't want those to take over. So. And then you know what we're going to do next. We've got to add cracks. It's like the ongoing theme for this project. Okay, so we're going to come down here and we're going to crack into our tombstones. It's got to come across as well. all beat up. <clears throat> okay, and this one, same thing. We're going to assume that our tombstones are a little bit dirty as well, so we're going to use our dry brush and we're going to get some dirt on them. I don't know why I assume they get dirty, but they're out in the field. So just give yourself some textural interest. Okay, with our little itty bitty dome scrubby, sorry about the light in your way, we're going to use the turquoise blue and we're going to dry rub, so 
dry it off in your paper towel. Some of this blue color around. We're going to add just some of our pumpkins. You could float this on some in some cases as well. My moon become part of the scene. I'm using a bigger crescent with the white in it. And I have these two um, trails of stuff coming together. So I'm just going to kind of mist this over the moon and make our little fodder shock stuff over here. And that's just milk. Um, what is it? Milk chocolate? No, honey brown. And we're leaving the, there's a burnt umber behind it. I want this just kind of to fill in this corner just a little bit. Okay, and then we'll put on the shocks. Just tap them in. Odd um, varying heights. Don't do all the same heights. To get our border perfectly straight, what we're going to do is we used a compass to run a line around the edge of the floor cloth. And we tape it right here. We score it with our thumbnail. And we tape the inside line. Make sure it looks straight in the middle. Sometimes tape bends. And I think this one bent just a little bit. Hello, come away. You score it with your fingernail. And then you take a makeup applicator and you tap it in to just a little bit, not scooping. And you just wipe it right on there. Okay, get the first coat on and then go in with a little bit heavier and just pat really gently and it should be all base coated. This golden straw does a really good job of base coating. And go back if you need to. And Presto Magico, take off your tape. And you have beautiful, perfect lines do the letters, you're going to base them in golden straw, and then you're going to shade at the top and the bottom, at the tops of these letters, not the bottom of those letters, till about halfway, walking the float down. If you get it on your black and you don't want to have to rebase coat, just use a real super strong Q-tip and blot it, and then you won't have to clean up.